Hello, everybody, and welcome to the Comedy Cellar Nightly Show. My name is Dave Jeskow. It is obviously Liza Minnelli's birthday, uh, so uh, that is uh, hence the the picture with her and her mom. <laughs> and when I say something like that, I keep thinking, I, I wish my mom was, you know, I don't know. I'm trying to think. Meryl Streep's just not good enough. It's got to be somebody really awesome, and uh, I just can't. Th- um, I know, Angie Dickinson. I keep, I'm sorry, I keep using that line every week. I'm having a good time with it. Uh, hi, Marcy. Uh, anyway, this is the Comedy Cellar Nightly Show. We do this show every Tuesday to promote the wonderful Comedy Cellar in the West Village and, of course, the one in Las Vegas. You know, if you were to come to the Comedy Cellar tonight, it's always a good show every night, but tonight is no exception. I mean, you can see David Tell in a, this is not normal, but he's trying, a 7.30 show. You don't have to wait till 1 in the morning to see oh, wow. 7 30 show and then you can see chris de stefano at 7 35 and tell me that guy was just playing radio city a couple months ago so tell me that's not pretty cool that you can just come down to the west village i mean make a reservation and see these two powerhouses of comedy just do regular 15 20 minute sets with new material i promise you this is the way you want to go and of course we also have the club in vegas which is incredible so uh you definitely want to uh, join and 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 be part of the fun at the Comedy Cellar. That's a show every night of the week, and it's open 365 days of the year. Let's say hello to Aunt Judy and Anonymous and Marcy. Lovely to see everybody here. And uh, let me, uh, so I just said it is Liza's birthday. I was This was not brought to my attention. I was well aware. <laughs> uh, but let me bring in our guest from last week because why not? I didn't. You know, I just I wanted to have him on anyway. We're going to go over the results of last week's Oscars thing. Look at some fashion. Please welcome again to the podcast, Scott Gorenstein, everybody. Hello, Scott. Hi, Dave, and happy license birthday to you. Yes, thank you for wearing your it's Liza a Outlives wonderful, t-shirt. wonderful t-shirt. day to celebrate. Hmm? <laughs> thank you for wearing your Liza Outlives T-shirt. That's right. Of One course. of the greatest uh, Twitter, Twitter X, whatever you call it, sites <laughs> in Twitter. So uh, that's really good stuff. And um, what uh, what I mean, what are you doing for Liza's birthday today? What's the plan? I just got home. I had lunch with a dear uh, friend who's one of her biggest fans. And we had lunch and we toasted her 78th birthday at Tavern on the Green. And it was a perfect New York City day in Central Park. So, yeah, I, I celebrated today. <laughs> Well, I'm glad that you did. Do you, I mean, what's she doing today? I heard there's a big party. There's a big party for her tonight. Is it? Uh, I, I read about it. I wouldn't be surprised. She's in Los Angeles, and uh, she usually does have a big party. She, I mean, it just the way she was saying it, it didn't look like it was her idea. But, uh, you know, <laughs> everybody obviously wants to celebrate. So They do. Yeah, I know. You know, I remember a couple years ago, actually it was, I think it was her 70th. I really went all out. I was doing her publicity at the time. Um, On her think, 70th. Yeah. So this is eight years ago. And I just went like hog wild with the PR and uh, every, and you know, of course, 70 is a milestone. You're just going to get more attention than, you know, 69 or 71. And the amount of media, uh, you know, from all over the world was just incredible. So the world does celebrate her. But I have to tell you the best. Um, her, when she turned 75, um, I don't know how this works, but Alexa, Google, whatever. When you said, good morning, Alexa, it was good morning. Today is the 75th birthday of the legendary entertainer, Liza Minnelli. She was born to Vincent Minnelli and Judy Garland in, you know, in Los Angeles. Vincent and- Minnelli's her dad? Yeah, <laughs> in 1946. <laughs> and I had not planned that at all. So it was absolutely the most incredible surprise. So the world does celebrate her and love her very much, which is, which is the way I love it. That's the way everybody likes. That's the way it's supposed to be. Why don't we yeah. um, go over the, uh, you know, the Oscars? Well, that, that, what was the last time she was at the Oscars? Was that that horrible wheelchair Lady Gaga? Uh, no, it wasn't horrible. It was great to see her there, and she presented with um, Lady Gaga. Yeah, that was two years ago exactly. 
That was just two years ago, but I mm -hmm. there's controversy that say they made her go out in a wheelchair. What's the well? I'm what not is the story on that. I'm not going to get into specifics of it, but um, yeah, if I had been there, that wouldn't have happened. <laughs> but you know, listen, it was great that they thought of her, and I know that she absolutely, you know, loved everyone jumping to their feet as they should. Right? As they should, of course. I mean, as they should. Yeah, I mean, right. even if you, even if you're not a fan, which of course that would never happen. Um you have to respect the legacy and the work. Uh, so yeah, that's somebody you get on your feet for. I, I agree with uh, rising for Al Pacino, but what a prick. Yeah. The guy's sitting there going like, let me do Shakespeare for you. And he can't even fucking read a card. Oh my God. Yeah. But, but getting back to Liza, not just for her career, but you know, when you were at the Academy Awards, and I've been there with her years, years before. Really? It, it, it's history. It's Hollywood. So, oh, you know what I mean? There's, it's, it's a different than the gold. Scotty, Girl. her family pretty much awards. invented the awards. You know, I yeah. mean, they no, were there oh, from no, the beginning. That's, um, <laughs> that's one of the things that I said in doing some press about her appearance at the Academy Awards, which is, you know, in her home from where she comes from, this is real, a religion. You know, like it's the Academy Awards. And Judy, the, the rest Look of his out. shirt it says was... Liza Minnelli outlives. That is his Twitter account. Oh, and that yeah. is where we find out everything, all news items, anything that happens. That's how I found out Matthew Perry died. It doesn't mm -hmm. matter. Uh, anything that happens in the world, we find out through Liza outlives. Yeah. He And I posted um, uh, a birthday tweet at like 12.01 and... Uh, <laughs> Immediately, there's like, you know, eight, nine thousand folks so far have. Uh, been... Anonymous says she wants that shirt. He gave me one last year, which was fantastic. You were one of the first to get it, actually. Yeah, it's exciting. Yeah. Um. All right, let's take a look at the results from this week, Mike. Um, I am going to share my screen. You are. And uh, yes, and I believe this should do it. I'm sharing it right now. You can so see everyone it. can. See Everyone can see what what a how many guy got wrong. You, know, what, you told me last night you, you got the most right. Well, thanks for ruining the surprise at the end. But uh, <laughs> way to go, Scotty! Thanks a lot. Uh, all right, we'll do it anyway. Uh, <laughs> I will waste the next twenty minutes and not build any suspense. Uh, I'm glad you know how to put on a show, Scotty. That's uh, really terrific. I didn't all understand. Right. I thought we were talking about Liza Minnelli. That, yeah, what did you say, Mike? Liza outlives that bit. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay. Thanks a lot. You just hurt my feelings, and I'm trying to get over it. But uh, all right, we will move on. These are the results from uh, uh, the Oscars, which were on Sunday, as you can see. Everybody chose the world's the wonderful story of Henry Sugar, except for you guys in the chat room. And uh, you lost. Uh, that's pretty much Marcy who chose red, white, and blue, even though I don't th I think she wanted that to win. So we let it go. This was an odds on favorite, obvious thing that was going to happen. And it turns out Wes, I keep saying Wes Craven, <laughs> but Wes <laughs> Anderson wasn't even there. And here we have, uh, we all pretty much picked except for mike <laughs> the abcs of book oh mike and memo picked nay nay why poo <laughs> we were all wrong it was the last repair shop i said there was a chance that could do it you guys totally talked me out of it which was fine um this was the only one if i had bet but i couldn't i didn't realize i don't think you can do it in new york you have to go to jersey i would have bet the last repair shop because it was plus 150 so if i put in 100 it'll want 150 but uh, yeah, that was a kind of an upset. Hmm. Probably the only one of the night. Everything kind of else went according to plan, right? Well, best actress. We, we'll, when we get to that one, we'll talk about that. Yeah. Um, so no one got that one. And then best animated short. Uh, you were the only one that missed that one. Uh, you said letter to a pig, even though I was, well, I guess there was a chance for it, but uh we were all pretty sure War is Over was going to win, mostly because the name, the title, it's John Lennon. It's, oh. 
you know. Mm. I don't think I knew that at the time. I don't think I knew that that was associated with John Lamont. And what no. made you think Letter to a Pig was the way to go? What's it about again? I was I had gone on a bunch of Academy Award websites and was playing those odds, you know, comparing various expert choices. And I think, you know, a few folks. Yeah, I was doing that too. And that's why I was just uh, checking it out. Uh, who just yeah. said they like 95 senses? Oh, Anonymous. That's good that you saw it. Uh, best international feature. This again was, uh, you know, real easy to pick. Um, even Memo, who wanted the teacher's lounge to win, said, mm. No, Zone of Interest is going to win. Mike picked perfect days. Mike, because you saw that, right? It's the only one I was aware of, correct? <laughs> that was the only one you were aware of. So you're bet you're betting like Memo, where we all know. I thought that. it was actually a really good movie, and, and usually the kind of crap they they vote for but i didn't know anything about zone of interest so well the zone of interest is once you found out it was a holocaust thing you should have just said oh right sorry I thought Dave, it was this, holocaust. It's, Dave, this, was also one, this is also the one where zone of interest was also in best picture and this right. of course, so we thought maybe it has better chance in this international right i think is, catalina is saying the society of the snow that's the is that the chilean one that you don't like or is that something else maybe i must i know there was a chilean one but i'm not sure what she's talking about all right so best documentary okay. what did you say mike yeah you're correct yeah um this was a no-brainer uh except for memo and you guys in the chat room uh everyone knew 20 days of maripol was going to win there's no way that could lose about the ukraine uh, everybody feels guilty and um there was that was an easy one and you know you can't win any money oh this one too a complete no-brainer uh, i don't think anybody went oh yeah of course memo picked the wasaji he's got a you know he's an idiot i'm telling you, scotty next year memo's out i already told him he's out well, uh, you know listen i thought about that it's like you just have to remind him the way we play this I, I screamed at him today and i okay. said you're not playing the game correctly it's a contest right. And you know, it you could have. I would have. I like no. Actually, there was no other thing that could possibly. You win. can always say should win. You know, I'm just right. Can't. That's what I told him. I said, can't you play should win? Will win? Yeah. Wasaji, the killers of the flower mill. Come on, look at these idiots. That I'm was not the worst song I've ever heard. In my life. It's not even a song. It's not even a song. Dave, I you know I couldn't remember if you actually did choose. Um, what was I made for? Because you were so pissed that that's no, no, no. I'm sorry. You were pissed that I'm just Ken was nominated. I think it's an awful. <laughs> the reason I, why right, that was nominated. I love was... Mark Ronson. I think he's ridiculously talented and really good. But that song sucks. Uh, no, granted, at the Oscars, the performance was fantastic. Thank you. But that's in the why movie, that song sucks. No, it was the performance of the night. And quite yeah. frankly, I have had enough of Billie Eilish. Um, and her movie songs. Uh, best original score. What do we have here? Were all of us on Oppenheimer? Of course. Memo and uh, you guys were important things. The choice was Oppenheimer. In fact, Scotty was even knew the guy's name. Ludwig Gorsandheim. <laughs> so uh, that one again. Again, that was uh, easy. Although Memo and I, we have spoken about that poor things. Was a very interesting score. Again, you're not playing the game correctly. We all knew that was going to win. We, this was another easy one, right? Oh, right. We had the Napoleon dog. <laughs> then I forgot to give you this one last week. The Danny DeVito one from, what was it, Get Shorty? <laughs> in, the right, in the lower right-hand corner. Yeah. Uh, that's not the real one either. Here's the real one. Mm -hmm. And we all picked godzilla what's it called the godzilla minus Hens. one Dave, minus, this was the one where the producer barely barely spoke english and was reading from the piece of paper for so long oh my god scotty i watched the thing because when you were texting me i i was two hours behind and thank yeah. god because i love fast forwarding and when i see something like this like best visual effects costume design and I have a 30 second thing and I have to press that three times and the best costume designer is still talking. You're an asshole who doesn't get it. I no agree. one wants to hear your speech. 
They want to hear best actress and actor, director. Nope. How could you not get that? Sorry. But why not get someone who can speak English and have them read your speech? You cannot well, speak English. That's the whole other. I don't know. Maybe they're angry at this country and they're trying to pull a fast one. Uh, to answer your question, that, that symbolizes Japan's lowest point after World War II. What? Oh, the Oscars? The minus one. <laughs> oh, oh, is that true? Yes. What is what is it like a serious movie? Well, the it's it's a commentary on uh, they're making a the commentary. A Godzilla, a Godzilla, Godzilla, movie? Godzilla movie. Yeah, the original and the original and this one are both commentaries on the atomic bomb. Well, oh, then Japan shouldn't have attacked it. us in 1942. Or is that I'm 41? not saying. <laughs> I don't know. Whatever it is, they attacked us on Aunt Judy's birthday, and that ain't right. And don't think we forgive, even though we have, because uh, your sushi's fantastic. All right. Uh, best sound. I don't know how you guys knew the zone of it, or Memo and the chat room, and Mike knew the zone of interest was going to win. Scotty and I were all on board. Oh, Mike? I I know what Memo said about this. It was it was. I think he would refer to something towards the end. I don't want to get into it because it's so sad. But it was like the sound coming from the concentration camp. I believe is it was his reference. And Mike, what did you just say? My Memo talked me into it. He made a very compelling argument. Oh, just like Scotty's saying. Yeah, yeah. So there's a there's a good one. Best makeup and hairstyling. You guys picked Meister for some reason. And oh. did we all pick poor things? Yes. The rest of us picked oh. poor things. Oh, oh right. You guys were picking Junos. Way to go. Do you know how that makes us all look here? <laughs> Dave, I don't think Maestro won anything, did it? No, because it stinks. No, I Again, I hate saying it because nobody hates Bradley Cooper. And, uh, you know, obviously Sarah's my pal, but uh, that movie sucks. <laughs> And uh, it shouldn't have been shouldn't have been nominated for anything. Except the world loves Bradley Cooper, and quite frankly, if I was with Bradley Cooper right now, I would absolutely tell him how much I enjoyed the movie because I fucking love Bradley Cooper. It, you know, I, we probably talk, said this last week, but he's now lost twelve nominations. Wow, he'll work it out just like Robert Downey Jr. Just take a little bit longer. Well, uh, Memo and Mike picked Anatomy of a Fall. That was an excellent guest. But unfortunately, Oppenheimer, it was their night. It was one of those movies that's just winning it all. And it did just that. Uh, best costume design, Mike. <laughs> time, right? I know. Uh, Let's go. Somebody picked Napoleon. Oh, the crowd picked Napoleon. Uh, Mike I did too. Napoleon. Yeah, that, that was a good one because that was worth some money. Uh, people had said that could happen. Uh, we all picked poor things. That was the winner. Memo was obsessed with poor things, but Napoleon was a good one. Like I would have put a bet on that because uh, people said it's probably it's possible that could work out. And mm -hmm. also, I thought you meant the dog. Oh, <laughs> oh, that's why you picked it. Uh, well, that's again, you guys in the chat room. I don't know what you're doing with that maestro, but obviously that wasn't the one. Scotty picked Killers of the Flower Moon. No reason that could have happened. Um, Mike picked four things, and I just and Memo picked El Conde, which you know. Wow, we were all over the place. On we this were one. all over the pick place, but wow. uh, I was just going all in on Oppenheimer and the odds. And obviously, you can't always pick the odds, and there's upsets. But this year was not an upset year. Oppenheimer was the clear one yeah. to choose, and everything else just paled in comparison. I guess. I mean. Even with Best Actress, there's, you know, even somebody from Killers of the Flower Moon wasn't going to win. This is a tough one because nobody knows what this is, really entails. But we were all pretty sure that the production design of Poor Things was damn good. And there's no reason the chat room couldn't be on Barbie because we wanted it to win something. It should have won something. It kicked ass at the box office. It was a really good movie. I don't know if it needed to be nominated for all these awards, but... That's when uh, they guys thought, but we got it right with uh, poor things. All of us yeah. got it right. And honestly, do you know how how hard it is to wrangle them dogs in Napoleon? Oh, <laughs> I, I I don't, but I see what you're saying. Uh, you guys, I was going to pick Spider Man. I can't believe this one, and uh, you guys changed my mind. We talked you out of it. Yep, you did, and you were absolutely right. 
Uh, and so and this is one where, where Memo played the game absolutely correctly. Yes, mm. yes, yes. That's true. Did. Yeah, good one. That's true. But, uh, I mean, it's just a weird one to win because no one's ever heard of it. It's just so weird. Best animated feature in this category over the years has been so obvious. that You've never heard weird. of Studio Ghibli or Miyazaki? What? There was one? You never heard of the studio Studio Ghibli or uh, Miyazaki? No, have you? Yeah, we're very famous. <laughs> nope, never heard of it. Uh, adapted screenplay. I uh, you got this one right, I think. We all got it wrong. Oh, everybody got it wrong. It was American fiction. We all got it wrong. You and I, Scotty, picked Barbie because we yeah. thought they got to yeah. give it something. Mm -hmm. uh, the chat room picked Oppenheimer, which totally no reason not to. Memo and Mike picked Poor Things. Why not? It's fucking. I didn't even know it was adapted. Uh, Where did you go? Oh, you went with me on Barbie. I see. Yep. Okay. Yep. And uh, none of us got that one right. No. None of us got that right. American Fiction was the odds-on favorite. And original. Uh, you guys picked the holdovers. Scotty picked the holdovers. Mike picked the holdovers. I picked Anatomy of a Fall, as did Memo, which was an amazing movie. I feel like if you guys, I don't know if you guys saw the movie, but yeah, you, um, yeah. I didn't. I probably would have picked Anatomy of a Fall if I'd seen any of these. Yeah, uh, that was it's terrific. So I chalk up another win, and uh, here we are with the supporting actress, uh, the Divine, and the Joyce Randolph, and then uh, <laughs> mm -hmm. this was a no-brainer. I'm yeah. pretty sure we all had this because she was what 5,000 to one so that was an easy one uh supporting actor that was a no-brainer this is another too. one where we just knew right yeah everybody yeah. knew it was okay. his year he was it was ridiculous and quite frankly well I Mark Ruffalo otherwise everybody else didn't really deserve it um but whatever best no, actress Ryan this, this was a great. tough one because uh, that Lily Gladstone, you never know how people are going to vote. Like, oh, it's, Emma Stone has one. This, She's white. I... This was the one where I said before, oh, it was the upset. But it wasn't a huge upset. It's not like. No, they were both neck and neck. They were both minus yeah. 120, meaning you right. had to put up $120 to win $100, both of them. So it was a yeah. tie. Emma Stone had won maybe a golden globe along the way so there was a chance that she could have gone but they picked the right person she was wonderful although i do agree with memo in this one that there was a chance for her she was in two fantastic movies this year mm -hmm. and sometimes yeah. that does even it out and they've definitely known to make an upset like that before i agree with memo on this one but uh i was just going with who i just assumed would win i don't know and just and, one last thing on best actress there was some talk we might have talked about last week that lily gladstone perhaps should have been in the best supporting category and she would have been better off there right absolutely absolutely and she probably would have won over uh this was again like robert downey jr uh only memo was the idiot who picked paul giamatti uh, we all knew cillian killian murphy was going to win and best director everyone knew well, except for you guys in the chat room. Uh, oh, and except for Mike. Uh, <laughs> oh, and except for Memo. <laughs> I just assume we all knew this was Christopher Nolan's year and there was no way to stop him. Mm. And, yeah, sometimes uh, they go against them. Maybe, like they do with Scorsese a lot and stuff like that. But um, Mike picked poor things for best picture and Memo picked Anatomy of a Fall and that was it. So... Uh, the chat room got 11 right. Memo got 12. Scotty got 16. Yeah. Mike got 13. And I got 20, which means what? I only missed four. Right? Are there 24? I guess. But, I mean, I'm in second place, and you did four better than me. So you really did well. Yeah. I kicked ass. Look, I put on projected winner because it was fun, like an election. <laughs> and there i won the 2024 that's two years in a row for me really Just going wow. with you know saying what sh what will win right not what should win and here of no, course of we course. just left this in for scotty's sake of course well and next uh, year next year timmy will next absolutely. year in jerusalem you know, listen, <laughs> wherever timmy has to go to win the award whether it's hollywood or jerusalem he will be there 
Um, okay, so oh, anonymous says Emma Stone was good in the curse. I never saw that. Just uh, that. Well, that's distraction annoyed me. I know it's TV. It's just um. Uh, okay, so now what I got, Scotty, is I got a couple of uh, stills from, you know, usually so slides, but they're all about the Oscars. Uh, we have the Oscar night and then some fashion because we like talking about fashion on the show. As a matter of fact, the next time we're in the studio, not in two weeks when Marcy's going to be here, but the next time after that, uh, Stacey Lang, Artie Lang's sister, wants to come in. She is a fashion designer, and uh, we want to talk some uh, fashion. Uh, which is kind of funny that I've been because we always show the um, what is it, Mike? The, the, the fashion shows, the New York Fashion yep. Milan, London, right? That's what it's called, right? Like Fashion Week. Yeah, yeah, dresses and shit. <laughs> <laughs> we we like we started like in the goofy <laughs> stuff, but now we like are commenting on the regular stuff. I'm sharing my screen again, Mike. All righty, here we go. Right. Here we are. Those are all the Oscars. You know, you can just take one, and I don't think they check. So um, I have that's, three. That's what I would do because that you know it's funny because um, how do I? Uh, oh, right, I forgot. Because there's there's the crew. Remember they were celebrating the crew. Those are the guys that work the yeah. curtains. Where it always seems like it's so effortless and it runs by electricity, but apparently not. Which I thought was kind of interesting. Hmm. And uh, here's the rest of the crew. I guess just. Um, mm -hmm. Loving, which you know, I think some of them have an Oscar in their pocket. That's <laughs> what I would do. <laughs> They're just uh, happy to be there. What? They're just happy to be there. Exactly. I mean, it would be exciting to be there. I cannot deny. That's Jimmy Kimmel giving his monologue, which I thought was very good. Not a big fan, uh, but uh, kind of a penis joke. <laughs> <laughs> well, I didn't go anywhere. That's Danny DeVito and Takashi Yamazasi, uh, who you I think you were making fun of before and well deserved. You're right. You should have gotten if you don't speak English. What are you reading? I don't know. Yeah. Good point. I like that they were all carrying those little Godzillas, though. Mm -hmm. And there's Billie Eilish and her brother singing again. And I mean, the production design for the Oscars was beautiful. Mm -hmm. But I, you know, her and her her outfits and singing out. <sighs> It just it's it's it slows down the Oscars for me. <laughs> I just want to see a song that I really like. But there there she is winning, and that's Greta Gerwig. She's hugging and beautiful Margot Robbie on the row. Oh my yeah. God, isn't she fantastic? Yeah. And there's your favorite part of the night, the John Cena, um, <laughs> before he gets unwrapped. I'm sorry, that was funny. That it was, was a really great funny. bit. It's funny, though, you know, I mean, we know he's really built and he's amazing, but I don't think he looks good naked. <laughs> like, it's just not. Mm. I'd rather see Brad Pitt, perhaps. That's too much. It looks awkward because his legs are skinnier. Oh. Scotty, your thought. <laughs> this is where. No, I don't know. Scotty, this is why you're on the show. <laughs> I don't think anyone would consider John Cena's legs skinny. I don't know. He looks dis disproportioned to me. Mm. He's kind of hunched over. That's you think that's all it is? Yeah. It was pretty funny though. It, it was yeah. It was a good yeah, day. there's uh Kate, Kate McKinnon, McKinnon who I don't care for, but I do mm -hmm. like America Ferrara, and I thought she looked really great. That's oh great that was movie. one of the best looks of the night. I think it might be Versace, yeah. but I'm not positive. It wasn't because I oh I don't well if I, I have it later coming up. Okay. Yeah. So here's Ryan Gosling and Margot Robbie. And I felt Ryan Gosling that day, and it was pretty much the Ryan Gosling show, um, looked just like uh, John Michael Higgins from Best in Show. Like, hmm. even his makeup. That's funny. Mike, am I <laughs> wrong about that? Like, he just, he had that I, kind of, I yeah. With, I like it. Us, with that flashy costume, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, that's exactly what I thought because it looked like he had makeup on too. I'm sure he did. Yeah. Well, I mean, but it looked like he had like eyeliner on, not normal dude makeup. I think he's worn it before. Maybe he's I, just really pretty. He's just a good guy. I, apparently, I mean, look, he just—it was really his. It's—it's it's all about him. <laughs> it's amazing. The whole Oscars were about him. It's kind of funny that, you know, there was this movie about women and Barbie and the whole thing seemed to be about Ken. 
It's kind of interesting. Well, yeah. And the only time I've ever seen him live, you know, in person was actually right near um, the club on Bleecker Street. I was walking by one day and he was buying the comedy seller. Yeah, I was on Bleecker, I remember. And uh, he was at like some outdoor kiosk thing buying batteries. And like, I'm just, <laughs> maybe it wasn't him. him. No, it was. That's too normal for a guy like this pretty. That's what I said to him. And what I like about him also is that he's a big song and dance person. He is because remember, he was on the Mickey Mouse Club, which means he knows how to sing and dance. And I like that. He's been doing it for a long time. And this number was incredible. And Mm -hmm. I hated it in the movie. But look at the look at it. The slash coming on after. That was that was unbelievable. But. It also looks like, what do you think this looks like, Mike? Uh, uh, Looney Tunes. Oh, that's true. I see what you're saying. But what movie could this be taken from? Oh, I mean. What what do you think my next photo is? Uh, I'll say it. You want me to say it? Yeah. Yeah. Oh, it's Gentlemen Prefer Blondes. No, no, no. You're thinking too gay. Um, Mike. uh, That's all I see. (laughs) No, it's uh, Blazing Saddle. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> dun, 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 dun. throw out your hands stick out your tush hands on your hips give them a push everybody's <laughs> doing the french mystique Wrong. i was thinking I, I was thinking the madonna video but... oh well, that's Mike, good the madonna vis- video is based, based on, on Dr. 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 Yeah. Uh, Girl's best friend that's right exactly. yeah right uh what's that one uh, material girl material yes this uh, is yes. tack here yeah. This is what I saw. Uh, this was my favorite part. Matthew Perry being dead. I'd forgotten and now I remembered. <laughs> For some reason, I really can't stand that guy. Um, this, what? Come on. Come on. Best original song. Come on. This would have been a time for a blazing saddle. Anonymous says they left out Suzanne Summers. That is true. Yeah. That is true. That's true. She was. Uh, they could have. I mean, they could have shown her in American Graffiti. That's one. It's a seminal moment in American Graffiti. That's right. And that's George Lucas before Star Wars. I agree with you, Anonymous. That's an oversight. A big oversight. Her oh, husband. What? Her yeah. husband, Alan Hamill, released a statement about it today, saying it's okay. Oh, is that true? Yeah. What do you say? I didn't read it. I just. I just saw the headline. Alan Hamill. Treat said, Williams. Good one too. That should have could have shown him in hair, right? Or dead heat. Uh, oh my god, <laughs> no! <laughs> I thought they're trying to make people feel better about themselves. Uh, <laughs> but just back to Suzanne, just for a second, you know, I would hope that the Emmys would never leave her out because she is terrible. Oh, they can't, yeah, that would be a major, yeah. right? Yeah, you can make a case where they forgot about her in the movies, but yes, I mean, the fact that they even put Matthew Perry in. Is where, but I know he was in movies. He's in multiple oh, movies, but you know the whole nine movies. yards, the whole ten yards, uh, yeah. other stuff. The Selma Hayek one. No, but Matthew Perry is television. Like the yes, world. Exactly. So we would have been movie okay movie. if they didn't put him in. Yeah. Um, oh, they they left out Timothy Shalom. Oh no, I think he's still alive. Anonymous. I'm just kidding. <laughs> um, we're trying to get a rise out of Scotty. So these are the guys from Twenty Days in Maripol. Uh, these are the idiots that made mm-hmm. that film. I don't know why they bother me so much. But this guy, the director, mm-hmm. Stalov Chernow, tell me he doesn't look exactly like the villain from Clear and Present Danger. What? I thought you were going to say Adam, Adam Sandler. No, look at him. Am I wrong? No. Yeah, you're wrong. I mean, exactly. I see it. I see it. Yeah. They have the same eyes. He even has the brooding look. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, this is guy Wacom de Almeida. Whatever. Um, I like this that we did a best animated short film that they had them all mm-hmm. around like that. I like that. And I, but you know, it you're making a mistake on television if you're not showing Chris Hemsworth uh, lit up. So that bad on you. Am I right? Am I wrong about that, Scotty? I mean, he must have been lit up at some point, right? I know, but never have him in the dark. Not, never that. Anya Taylor Joy too. I like also. Here's uh, Memo's favorite uh, uh, director, uh, <laughs> who had no idea a woman directed this film. Come on. Um, I mean, she's so tall. 
and scary, but what a damn good film. And then uh, this guy, how was he not nominated? That's Messi. Messi who played Snoop. But he was he was goddamn good in that film. Mike, weren't you the one that said he was a real actor or something? Uh, well, no, I think Memo said that. Yeah, Memo was it? talking about the specific scene where uh, the dogs, Messi, Snoop. No, it's not from Napoleon. <laughs> no. <laughs> no, no, I'm talking this, to the chat room, Scotty. Go ahead. Sorry. Uh, this, this scene where the dog has to um, go for the... Over right, pretend, pretend he's having a seizure. About it last week. Yeah, I know. I thought you had new information. Yeah. What the? <laughs> <laughs> All right. So I liked I I liked the way they did this this year, with all the the you know best supporting actors. I don't know how they picked or choose. I was wondering, Scotty, if you could tell me what uh, what these guys all won for. You know what what did Sam Rockwell win for? Oh, that's a good one. I could not, but the one thing I wanted to point out about this, you know, the five previous winners, this is not the first time they did it. They did it in 2004, 2006, whatever year that Sean Penn won for Milk was the first year that they did it. And it was a lot more effective previously. I'll send you the Sean Penn winning, you know, category, the presentation was so much more moving. Uh, the five folks that you have here, I didn't find that they had any type of connection with well, the today. Yeah, yeah. No, I, I, they I didn't I, have any type of emotional connection with today's nominee, and that sort of took took. I agree, but I effort. think I felt like the one of them did. It could have been this one. I think this one was the only one that had a connection. Mm -hmm. Like each one of them had a connection, maybe, but uh, except for Tim Robbins, who came off. Well, like you can't see. Um, he's cut off here, but Nick, this is. This, oh, this is best supporting. So okay, right. Um, right okay. That's uh, Marshall, uh, Marsh, whatever that. Marshall Ali from. Marshall Ali. Uh, Midnight. From what? Midnight is that the name? Moonlight. Of that? Moonlight, right? So That's Sam cool. Rockwell won for three billboards outside Ebbing, Missouri. Mm -hmm. I remember. Oh, God. I remember that okay. one. Okay. Tim Robbins won for Mystic River in wow. 2003. Okay. Christoph Waltz won twice. Yeah. Both Bastards. for Quentin Tarantino movies. Right. And Glorious Bastards and Django Unchained in 2009, 2012. And Marshall Ali won in 2016. And Sam Rockwell won in 2017. One other thing I want to say about the how do you choose the five nominees and choose the one who won last year Par uh i can't pronounce his name yeah but you know he won in that uh, was short a, round we call him you know because we used to see him you know 30 <laughs> years ago with indy and all that stuff I get, so i get that they want to have like last year's winner but well, there's they have no to hmm? they have to have last year's winner because you notice all you of last year's to. winners no, but you have to because that's the way it's always been. That's the, the fun go on. of winning I, that you want to have last year's winner because you get to announce the next one. And that's why all of them announced who the winner was. Right. But I think if I was doing it, I would throw out that playbook. And what I would do is I would say, I want movie stars. I want people who, when you see, and I'm just going to choose one here, I'm going to go with Tim Robbins. He's an old-fashioned Hollywood movie star. There's an emotional connection with the audience that he has. I don't think the audience cares all that much about Christoph Waltz. I, I don't know. Or Sam Rockwell. I, I disagree I, with everything you're saying. I would say Tim Robbins, although I agree he is the only technical movie star here in a way, um, I think he's the only one that didn't have a connection with the audience. I think the audience prefers Christoph Waltz. They like him and they like Sam Rockwell. And they don't like Tim Robbins. I think you're wrong, Michael. Chime in. Why would people not like? Him? I would. I I did a. I I was happier to see Sam Rockwell and Christoph. I mean, I I have no problem with Tim Robbins, but it's been right, right, so long he was, since he really seemed relevant. That he was the I, least relevant. I don't think of him as like Hollywood the way you think of like. Uh, the only reason he's a movie star is because he's not around. He's not on social media. He's not. 
you know, I think that's the only reason he's a little, we don't know a lot about him. So in that sense, maybe, but other than that, like Mike is saying, yeah. I'm saying, I, mean, I, I don't think of Hollywood and think of, uh, I think of, of him. I mean, like the way you would think of Humphrey, Humphrey Bogart, it's like, he doesn't have that parallel with me. So, let right. me produce it. And if we let move me produce in, it and then we'll come back and sing. Okay. So here's the supporting <laughs> actresses. And I think these were a little bit better in uh, the sense. So we have uh, Mary Steenburgen. Uh, you know what she won for? Yes, Anybody I do. Uh, Har uh, Harold. Um, you're, ha you're right there. What's it called? Melvin and Howard. Yes, thank you. In 1980. I forgot about it, her win. And that was a major win. It was a major win for her. Um, she was a new actress on the scene. And that movie had been nominated for a number of, you know, Academy Awards, including Best Picture, uh, but, uh, but including most, Best most, Actor. Yeah, and, and these supporting actresses are all very, very relevant. Um, so, Scotty, you'll never get this one. What about Rita Moreno? You probably have no idea what she won for. There's no way you'll know. What's that story? I'm making fun of you. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, she is up there for me with Liza. Winning 1961, she's 90. She looks better than the girls, than all the girls in 80 for Brady. She looked the youngest in that movie, yeah. out of Sally Field and uh, Lily Tomlin and Jane Fonda. It's it's fat. Rita Moreno. How she is ageless. She does look great. Yeah, uh, that Lupita Nyong'o. Oh my God, gorgeous, fantastic. Uh, you know the movie. Uh, Django Unchained, right? Nope, nope. Oh, what is it? 12 Years a Slave. Oh, right, okay. All the way back in 2013. And okay. what about Regina King? Wait, wait, hold on. I got a question for you. Who was the very first person to congratulate her after she won for that movie? Donald Trump. Liza Minnelli. Oh, <laughs> I just figure what that that would be an interesting. Uh, I, mean, I can't imagine. That'd be no, many, many. No, you're right because many people always say, "Oh, it wasn't Donald Trump," and I'm like, "No." It wasn't. I thought you were making that Jesse Owens joke. The which one? <laughs> just Adolf Hitler. So. Oh. <laughs> so Regina King, I no one will ever remember what movie she won ever. Um, it there's was no way you. Just, I'd be very impressed. Two years ago. Yeah, was I know. It the one that she, was it the one that she directed? No, I don't think so. I don't think I know. Uh, Anonymous said it all goes back to Liza. Uh, it's called If Beale Street Could Talk. What no one saw, no one cared about, will never yeah, be remembered. No, Dave, but I like Regina it. King a lot. She directed it. She did? Wow. Is that true, Mike? I said, wow, I have no idea. Let me find out. I didn't know either. Obviously, Jamie Lee Curtis is the shit, as we know from last year. Let's move on to Best Actor. Mm -hmm. I fucking uh, love the people they got here. I was okay with all this. No, Nicolas Cage was fantastic. Right, right. I was all in. What did he win for, you know? Oh, the, the 24 Hours Vegas um, drinking. Right. Leaving Las Vegas. Oh, what's it called, Austin Vegas? Yeah, 1995. Matthew McConaughey for? Oh, um, Liza was the first person to come out and support him. It was the movie where he won Best Actor and Jared Leto won Best Supporting, and I could not tell you what it was called. Dallas Buyers Club. Yep. We did a... Um, 2013. So it was interesting. Dallas Buyers Club movie studio, whatever, somehow found out that she had watched the screener and really loved it and asked, would we do a luncheon for them for the, you know, like whatever, you know, they always get the Academy Award members and we have a lovely luncheon. Liza says, hey, yeah, I love the movie. I'll we'll totally like host the thing. And it was at Monkey Bar on the Upper East Side, early January, obviously whatever year that was. And Liza gave up and just gave this incredible speech. And the Hollywood Reporter I didn't even know this, was there that day. And like this incredible, incredible article came out like later on that afternoon that Liza Minnelli endorsed, <laughs> endorsed these two for the Oscars and they went on to win. Wow. It was, it was a really impressive. Yeah. I do, I do enjoy 
uh, additional lives and stories, especially today. So this is good stuff. Yeah, it's so glad true. you're here. Yeah. Ben Kingsley, we all know what he won for. No. Um. <laughs> what? Gandhi, right? Yeah, yeah, exactly. I was just, you know, I was checking. Eighty. That was eighty-two. He's the oldest one there. Mm. And uh, Forrest Whitaker. Do you remember what his was for? Oh, King of Something, it's called. Right, the last King of Scotland, 2006. Oh, yeah, right. What a great movie. Yeah, and, and, and how about this? How about this? There's two people up there that are um, alumni of Fast Times at Ridgemont High. Brendan Fraser? No. Oh, it, of course, yeah. No. No. Brendan Fraser? Try again. Well, I, who? Well, the way you were saying, you were so positive. I've just. Well, I, well, I'm not. so not positive. Well, it's Forrest Whitaker, and and Nicholas Cage. We're in Fast Times at Richmond High. That's right. Oh. God, so if know. like if they had gotten Sean Penn, there would have been <laughs> three alumni from Fast Times at Richmond High. Would that be unbelievable? Two best actor awards from there are three in that goddamn movie best actor not even supporting yeah. actor i'll tell you this amy heckerling's got an eye she's fantastic and there look how beautiful he is i love him he's the best all right so actress wise what do we got here sally field two-time oscar winner scotty can you name the movies of course um a uh, long time no no hold on hold on <laughs> heart Right, and and uh, uh, Norma Ray. <laughs> yes. And what's the other one? I just said Norma Ray. What's the second one? Okay. Listen to me this time. Places from the heart and Norma Ray. It's places in the heart, but uh, oh. you're very close. Okay. Yes. 1979, her being the oldest win there. And, uh, and, and then places was a couple years later. And of course, the uh, You Like Me, You Like Me speech, the legendary. Uh, Jennifer Lawrence, one of my favorite films. Uh, she's she tripped going up the stairs. That's right. That's right. Silver What's the movie, Mike? Is it Silver Linings? Yep. Yes. Silver Linings Playbook in 2012. Jesus Christ, that's 12 years ago. Wow. Uh, Jessica Lang. I did not know this. I did not. I would never oh. have guessed this. Uh, well, she has two. So she has. Does best... she have two? I I think she only has one, according to. Uh, Hello. What, yeah. You have a real gay man here. Okay, so she has a uh, best supporting for Tootsie. Oh, and oh, supporting. Yes. Best actress is Blue Sky. That's correct. No, I knew about the supporting. I was just talking about actress. Mm. I thought she had won for Francis or something. It's just nominated. Nominated. Uh, she's along with many other nominations, of course. Yeah. Right, right. I know she won for Tootsie. Uh, Charlize Theron. Uh, anybody know? That was a long oh. time ago, too. She plays the. I, Eileen Warnes was the name of the character she played. But what was it called? It was called Monster. Okay. And it's all the way back in 1993. No. Yeah. Shirley Theron has been around that long. Yeah, right. I mean, she's old. She's. I mean, she's almost 50. I think. No, she's stunning. How I know. She's beautiful, no. and I think single. Yeah, that's. Oh, right. Emma Stone is so cute. Jennifer Lawrence is really pretty. You see uh, that movie, uh, No Hard Feelings? Did you say 1993? What did you say? Did you say 1993? I did. Is that not correct? It's 2003. Oh, 2003. That makes Thank more you. sense. Yeah, um, I wrote 93. You, what were you just asking about Jennifer Lawrence? Did you see No Hard Feelings? Yes. Yes, I did. Um, I like that movie. But it was this the wonderful throwback to 80s teen movies. Yeah, yeah. Right. You I know. enjoyed it. And that's the best picture with uh, stupid Oppenheimer. And here we go with the dresses. Look at that. Look at that. Oh, America. Wow. It is Versace. Okay. Look how it's great fantastic. that is. It's what? absolutely fantastic. Yeah. It's a great dress. It's a really great. And it's pink. It's correct for Barbie. Look how beautiful she is. Anna that's Taylor a, Joy. That's yeah, Kristen right. Dior. Yeah. I mean, she took her dad, which was really sweet. She um, did? Yeah, I mean, that dress is, that's a major dress. She's too. a good actress. There's Ariana Grande. I always think she's so pretty, but a little My weird. My friend but Doug okay. was her date that night. Who was? What? My friend Doug is her best friend, and he accompanied her. 
That's unbelievable. Uh-huh. <laughs> she brought her own couch. That's Becky G and a Vera Wang. She's hot. What if she sang the uh, the fire song? The, yeah. uh, the Cheetos. Yeah, the, uh, from the Fritos movie. Right, right. <laughs> oh, so d- is this the song that was written by Diane Warren? Yes. All right. So you know what came out today about this whole thing, right? No. Okay. Do so tell. The presenter of this award was Ariana Grande and Cynthia- uh, The girl from Wicked. Those and sent the Diablo or something, right? Yeah, Arivo. Arivo, sorry. So, like Al Pacino, they just went straight to the winner and they didn't go through the name of the song and the composer. So, therefore, from the st- they never said whatever the name of the song is written by Diane Warren. So, anyway, so they announced you know the Billie Eilish song, whatever. And Diane Warren like had a fit and was walking around the audience looking for you know members of the board of governors and you know to raise some hell. This was all reported today. Well, but didn't they they went through all the songs? Was it necessary to say them again? Well, you might be right. I don't know what was on the prompter. You know, did Cynthia and Ariana, you know, make a mistake? Well, they do look high. But then or you could say the thing for the best picture too, because but they already went through them. Or is it necessary to go over them again? Correct. But listen, Al Pacino screwed that up. You know, he just did. What a weirdo is sitting there going like, "I can do Shakespeare, I can do all this," and then he reads it wrong. It's still so fucked yeah. up. Yeah. What, what kind of outfit is this? Chino. What is What's this? That he hasn't been the same since Dunkachino. <laughs> What kind of outfit is what is that? This is Chanel, and yeah, well, this is Chanel, yeah. I mean, she's really pretty, but I don't like what she wears. It's not, and I listen, this is not what you wear to the Oscars, okay? Exactly, yeah. this is what George Lazenby is- wore and James Bond <laughs> <laughs> and on Her Majesty's Secret Service. That's right. Um, there's Bradley Cooper and his mom. Well, I'm not in favor of first of all, I don't think the jacket fits him well, and he's not wearing a tie, so I'm not in favor. I agree, of it's Louis Vuitton, but yeah. I don't love it either. No. And then GQ did a whole article yesterday on men not wearing ties to the Academy Awards anymore. But. We got to put a stop to that. I hate this woman. I don't know why. I mean, I just That's don't like Carrie uh, Mulligan. Carrie Mulligan. Okay. And I, I just, I can't stand her acting. I, I just, it, it just makes me angry. I don't know what it is about her. Okay. I just can't. I was so glad she didn't win. Um, that is a major. Dr- I'll give her the dress, though. That is that's a major dress. dress. That is one form. For it's called Award. a mermaid dress. I'm not sure it's perfect for the Academy Awards, but it's it's a major dress. See, that's my man. He wore a tie. He gets it. Yeah, he's all right. I like him. And uh, that's Florence Poog. Is I think that's your best. She's really hot. I think she's in Dune. She- what can you yeah. tell me about her? I don't know anything about her except there was a billboard uh, right next to Bloomingdale's mm-hmm. um, over the summer that she just looks so pretty. I don't really know. Well, I will tell her. you that she has been in two movies with Jim the Sha- Chalamet. Oh. <laughs> can, uh, oh, both Dunes? Uh, d- d- uh, Little Women and Dune too. Oh. Well, obviously they enjoy working together. Yeah. Look how pretty she is. She's in Christian Dior. Oh, I think she's very, very pretty and obviously a really good actress. And I, I think she'll like, probably end up winning another one, too, at some point. Sure. But I do like the dress that she wore the night that she won, whatever. You guys just said the year. It was 12 years ago. Silver Linings playbook, that red Yeah, dress, it was 2012. You know, that was. I'm sorry know, about the Charlie Theron one again. Uh, this is Leah Lewis. I love her because she used to be in that show, Nancy Drew, and I thought she was hot then. She's a little too thin, uh, but... Uh, I think she's really sexy. I don't know how she got to the Oscars, but uh, from being on Nancy Drew on the CW network, but she's sexy. That's I think that's one of the reasons I was watching. Also, I like that girl who played Nancy Drew. She's just the hottest thing that there is. This I is our mom. Uh, no. Margot Robbie. No, no, I meant who? who's the designer? I don't know what she's wearing. Might be. Um, I'm not sure. She's Might gorgeous. Be, um, I don't know. She's perfect in the movie, too. She's really cool. Yep. Does anyone know who this is? Yeah, it's um, 
starts with an M. Hello. She won for Children of a Lesser God. Oh, come on. Help me out. That's right. I was just checking to see because she looks different than she did here in the greatest uh, mm -hmm. guest appearance of all time. Bingo. It's Marley Maitland. Right. Of course. Yes. But she just looks so different. Sometimes we play this game. Can you guess who it is? She mm -hmm. looks beautiful. I, 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 just, I mean, I know her, but I, don't, I just couldn't think of it. Yeah. Well, I think Margot Robbie's was Versace. Oh, it was. Thank you. Yeah. Here's uh, Mike's favorite uh, grandmothers. Yep, nine nine away and po po p. Oh. I love their TikTok videos where they rap and cook. The what? <laughs> Never mind. Oh, <laughs> there's these two. There's a bunch of there's a trend with Asian women rapping and cooking. Mm. Oh, rapping on TikTok. Okay. Here's, I mean, come on, they're on the red carpet. The uh, singers from the uh, oh, the singers yeah. Osage Nation. It's a great photo. It is a great photo, but. I'm not interested in the music. See, there's Regina King. King. She's so pretty. Yeah. I think she's really, really good. I met her once. There's Rita small. Moreno. Look at her. I, I don't love the dress, though. No, the dress, but she's 92. I'll let it go. Yeah. And God bless 92. I want to be that healthy at 92. You know? Right. She's still kicking. Who's he with, by the way? Oh, so you know who it was right away. Oh, of course, I know Sean Lennon. I wouldn't have known. That's yeah, Sean really? Lennon's with Kemp Mool. Oh, some weirdo. Know? No, I, I don't think so. But it's like, geez, it's like he, what is he just yeah. trying to be like his dad and marry a weirdo Yoko or something? <laughs> I don't know if they're married. I don't know. I don't know what she is, but I think, look at her. Wait, what is that? Does she have a, a weird nail? Look you know what's that. great, though? Oh my God, I can't stand that. You know what's, he's just so devoted to his mother and even you know that's what he spoke about the night of the awards when he's like i hope everyone can wish my mom a happy mother's day because you know in the uk good for mm -hmm. him that's vanessa hudgens i didn't know she's wearing vera wang i didn't know she was pregnant i'm very upset she, about that I yeah like she was there because she was doing um on the red carpet interviews i think for entertainment tonight oh she was doing the interviews does anybody know who she's married who knocked her up who's she married uh, to it's no one famous, Dave. Oh, so I have a chance. Yes, and she was the one that was with Austin Butler for. They were literally together for ten years. They were broke up. Yeah. Oh, so as soon as he was nominated, they broke up. That's hilarious. <laughs> it's been a couple of years since they broke up. Yeah. So you don't? Oh, a couple of years since they broke up. So that's not yeah. his kid. Hmm. Oh God, no! <laughs> and look at how beautiful. Stop it! This is this is. is the look of the night. Oh, you agree. <laughs> Oh my God! Yes, oh, she's, she's yeah, you did the dress. Oh, Cole Tucker know. was uh, Vanessa Hudgens' guy. Okay, what'd you say? Cole Tucker was Vanessa Hudgens' dude. Who? Who's that? I, I, I told you he wasn't anyone famous. Um. Yeah, she's beautiful. He's a truck driver from New Mexico. Oh, actually, he's a shortstop from the Seattle Mariners. Is that true? Yeah. Oh, that makes sense. That Dave, makes sense. who who did the dress? I don't know. Oh, okay. I mean, guys, is the figure the? She's tall. She's well. well that's the funny thing. Uh, you know, her boyfriend's really tiny. So I don't know that he's that much shorter than he's her. He's really tiny. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> I think he's only five seven five eight. She's yeah. just gorgeous. This this is oh thank you thank you she's wearing Halston here. It was Armani. Oh, oh this okay. this was Armani. Yeah. Wow. But that this is also my... <laughs> This is what she wore to the Oscars in 1972. Yes. Were you okay with this outfit? After what Nobody we just asked saw. Me at the time, I wasn't really around, so. <laughs> Uh, you know what I'm saying, though. I mean, does it, this doesn't really stand the test of time, does it, after what we just saw? I don't know, because you have to put everything in context. And I don't know what the other dresses were. You know what I mean? Like, they might not have dressed like this back yeah. then, 50 years ago. Listen, Halston was, you know, a hot designer in New York in the 70s, and she was aligned with him immediately. So she's wearing... You know, and how did she win this? I'm kidding. Oh, stop I'm it. Kidding. Thank you. I it really looked like curtains the, back then. I will reach through the curtain. Zoom and strangle you.
<laughs> and uh, of course the family photo. Well, let me just say one more thing about the family and the Academy Awards. Liza's has always often pointed out that they're the only nuclear family where everyone has won an Oscar. Oh, wow. Her father, of course, has won for Gigi. Um, her mom won the Youth Award, whatever, for Wizard. And then, of course, Liza for yeah. um, uh, Tom Holland is 5'7", Zendaya is 5'10". Wow. To Google. Yikes. Uh, here's Zendaya's, what I was talking about. Zendaya's five. What's that? Oh, that's the grandmother rapping. Yeah. That's, that's enough of that. <laughs> what? No, it wasn't. I love watching that kind of stuff. I just don't like the rapping. <laughs> is it cake? Is this... <laughs> Scotty, can you center yourself? Come on. Oh, sorry. <laughs> Are you a professional? Not today, I'm not. Which um, there we go. Sorry. Yeah, there you go. Uh, I like that, Mike. I like watching cooking. That's my uh, algorithm. That's amazing. Okay, Every one of the fam what, what did Vincent Minnelli win for? Best director for Gigi. Oh, G Gigi. Yeah. Thank heaven for little girls. <laughs> Without Just, them, yeah. what would little boys be? And old, that's not the word. Thank but just, <laughs> it's an old fashioned Hollywood musical. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, but that song alone, I mean, can you even do that today? Can you even sing that song? <laughs> I mean, what oh, little mean? girls are so wonderful. I love little girls. <laughs> Flip it. <laughs> Thank him. And a little oh, girl yeah. about five or six, and you know they are going to grow up to be beautiful women. I, that is, this is what I want to Oh, sorry. That's how it starts, right? I'm not wrong, yeah. right? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I'm not Thank making you. that up, Mike. <laughs> no, no, I, I know you're right. Out from little boys, too. <laughs> I was one of the shows got this from the office uh, of 19... Well, that... But that's like, legendary. That's yeah. legendary. She gets... Uh, you know, listen, I'm going to give Diane Keaton a pass only because no one's ever going to do Diane Keaton. But, you right. Know, yeah. you, know, you definitely get a pass... Yeah. She was, I mean, what an epic, I mean, she won and she was amazing. And of course, that's from the movie in a way, too. And probably were what he was like, just do what you do. And um, he probably loved it when he saw it. She's amazing. They even use it in the movie Splash. And they say, oh, honey, the Annie Hall look went out five years ago. Uh, and what an iconic look. Um, yeah. yeah, right. I mean, it's it's if you're going to make a statement in, in a way which which is cool and weird and not the norm but still awesome boy that was it huh she's something else she ruled the roost back then absolutely I'm trying to think if she i think did she win twice no she didn't win for reds probably nominated maureen stapleton could have won best supporting i think what was that 81 yeah that was uh, and it was up against like that was the ragtime year, with James right. James, James Cagney, Cagney, right? Um, but yeah, that she won in seventy seven. But she was nominated, but yeah, I guess she never won again, which is odd. She's so talented. Well, it was probably nominated other times. Yeah, was, that's the movie she did with um, Mel Gibson, maybe. Mel Gibson. I can't see her working with Mel Gibson. <sighs> So you know, I, Sarah's been trying to introduce me to her for a long time, and we just keep missing each other. But she's not, Diane Keaton's not in New York. She's in LA. No, when I'm in LA. Oh, okay. Yeah, Mrs. Did, Suffle. No, did, did they work did they Oh, work Mrs. Suffle, right. That's the Mel Gibson one, Scotty. You were correct. Oh, okay. Did Sarah work with her? No, I think they just like each other. Oh. She Listen, Diane Keaton, you know, that's a whole other segment we could do. But, you know, Diane Keaton does works, but she doesn't do great work these days. She puts No, no, she she just does a little fluff, kind of the way De Niro was doing until he started picking it up. Correct. Again. Yeah. Yeah. 
It's all right. She just doesn't care. She made her money and got out of the business, you know, in a way. Well, she's making her money. She's no, doing- I, I know. But she's still cool. You know, it's funny when um, I guess they had a they had a thing for her, I guess, at the AFI, American Film Institute. It's the only thing Woody Allen ever came to. And, you know, so it was Al Pacino and Woody Allen, and they've all dated her, <laughs> you know. And, and Warren Beatty. And Warren Beatty. And they all just got up and just all they said was she may be the coolest girl they've ever met. Yeah, <laughs> I remember like, that. Fun that she's fun and cool, and it's kind of weird that nobody ended up with her, you know, because it's she's that dumb cool. question. You'll know the answer. What did she ever work with Jack Nicholson? What am I missing here? That sounds familiar, but I don't know. Mike, anything? I say that again. Uh, did Diane Keaton Jack, Jack ever Nicholson. work with Jack Nicholson? And if not. Isn't that the most logical pairing at some point? Yeah. No, wait. They did do something together. It, the later one, like um, not the one with uh, where he's in the hot tub, but maybe it is that one about Schmidt. No, the, okay. one of those. One of, one of those. Give. What? Something's got to give. Something's got to get. No, no. Well, they, they, they were in that together. Wait. Okay. Oh, something's got to give. I get confused between that one and the Helen Hunt one. What's the right. name of that one? About Schmidt. No, 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 no. The Helen Hunt. No, no, no. Diane Keaton is not in the one with Helen Hunt. And no, Greg she's Keaton. in something's got to give. Who is? Third base. Diane Keaton. <laughs> no, wait, what's the name of the movie with Helen Hunt and uh, Greg Kinnear and Jack Nicholson? Yeah, but, uh, let me check because I about Schmidt's one with Kathy Bates. Right, right. Um, I always as good sounds, as it gets. As I, good I, I as it gets, it. and something I gotta give confuse me all the time. Thank you, thank you, anonymous. Okay, right. I knew they worked together. Went after some uh, as good as it gets. But again, like that. I'm sorry, but that's that's a pairing. So that happen. means she's pretty much paired with everyone that's ever made a difference in Hollywood. Maybe not Clint Eastwood, and maybe that's the only one. But she's fucking one, cool. One thing on Warren Beatty. Where was he the other night? What? Oh, because Annette Benning was there by herself? I think he stayed out. I think he doesn't go out anymore. I think he's just kind of... But who... He is Hollywood. Like that's exactly. I agree, but I think he. I think he's. I think he's hung it up. I think he doesn't go out. She's much younger than he is. Well, she works a lot, which is fantastic. She has a new show coming on, like Apple TV or Netflix or something. Or it was weird. We got to find it. We got to get on that. Find out why Warren Beatty wasn't there. I agree. I. I. Doesn't look good. Trying to find that. He looks like he's having a hard time. That's what I'm saying, he's, you know. He's 85, guys. Yeah, yeah no, no, so, I'm not making fun of him. You know, no, 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 I know. I, and I think, Mike, you might oh, wow. be right that, and I don't yeah. know when that picture is, but you might be right because he may not, he's so vain. He may not want to be in public anymore. Right? Exactly. That's mm-hmm. what, I mean, the guy was the most handsome man in the, yes. in the history of time. And, yeah. you know, it's just, it's, it must be hard to go out like that, even though he, he still looks good. He's just pale. If he had sun. You know what's so funny, though? Like, you guys will remember this because you're, you know, not teenagers, but like the idea that Warren Beatty would ever get married. And now he's been married to Annette Benning for over 30 years. Now. Well, he finally figured he's like, all right, this is what I'm going to do. I'm going to set this. I'm going to settle down. He, he had his fun 50 years right. of fun. <laughs> but it's was it's as if if um, Leonardo DiCaprio got married today. Right. And, you know, the, 25 years from now, they're celebrating a 25 year anniversary. I'm like, I'm like, guys, we remember the time when he was out with a different model every night. Marcy, you don't know what you're talking about. He was, he, John Hamm's very attractive, but Warren Beatty was way more attractive than John Hamm. In I'm with you, James. You're not thinking, Marcy. Warren not, Beatty was a not going back. beautiful, beautiful, beautiful. He was a beautiful man, and John Hamm, as handsome as he is, is not a beautiful man. Warren Beatty is a beautiful man. Right. John Hamm is this plain old handsome. There it is. There's the difference, Marcy. Plain old handsome. What and about really not having Christopher Reeves? Christopher Reeves? Yeah. He's my favorite. He was, he was handsome, but he was more that. handsome in a Chris in a please child. don't get me started in Chris Reeves. <laughs> it's very possible uh, something could have happened there, I'll tell you. 
Oh, boy. <laughs> My friend Vincent saw a play with him. One, like, they went to the play together. They were friendly. I was like, how could you be friendly with Chris Reeves? Can how do you even I sit in a chair? Is Chris Reeves like 6'5"? He can't fit in a Broadway chair. <laughs> it was, uh, he probably saw him in Death Trap. No, no, no. They went together to see a play. They were friendly. Oh, wow. That's cool. I know. That's Yeah, great. Anonymous Vincent's a good-looking man, too. You got that right. They were all together, yeah. Anyway, Scotty, happy birthday to Liza, your best pal. And uh, thank you, idol. For, and she is the for best, including me today. How cool thank she you. looks back there. Right. Good to be with you guys. Yeah. What um, What are you going to do for the rest of the few hours you have to celebrate her seventy fifth? I literally just got home man, right right before we got on here, so I'm about to have some dinner with Liza. No, watching <laughs> Liza movies. I'm going to listen to some music. As oh, as okay. thank God. Are you going to watch Lies with a Z, maybe? I mean, something to commemorate the day? Or This is like 420 for most of us. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> or uh, may the force be may the fourth be right. with you. You know, watch a little Star Wars. But uh, what else do you have? Liza Minnelli outlives. Liza outlives on Twitter, one of the greatest Twitter sites that there is. Thank you. Right there. And what else is going on, Scotty? That we That's it. That's all I got. I have yeah. got nothing going on. Me too. I, uh, Mike, what do you do? Did you did the uh, Rich Voss thing yet, or is that coming up this weekend? This weekend, I'll be with Rich Voss, okay. the plate of House of Comedy, Thursday right. through Sunday. Right. Uh, what about next weekend? Uh, I'll be doing shows in San Antonio and Austin, and then I'll be back in the city the week after that. Right. We'll be virtual again next week, and then in the studio again the week after. And our guest will be a little Marcy Centers. How about that? Hey guys, uh, why are you not in the studio today? Oh, because Mike's in Texas. Oh. Sometimes he goes back and forth. So when he's in Texas, we're remote. And when he's Got in New it. York, we're obviously in the studio. And we love it's fun to do both. Mike, where were you last week? I was in the Poconos. That was uh okay. You get around. Jeez. That was a that was that's never happened before, actually. He's very reliable. I've only like, been uh, I, I've been nowhere since and, and any help any hooked us up like which was nice. Uh Mar Scotty, before I go, Marcy wants to know how do you drink your gin? Um with uh, how do I gin? I don't, I drink vodka. Oh, I'm not sure why Marcy answered that question. I thought maybe you said something about drinking. No, gin. I love vodka. All right, I wasted everybody's time. Thanks a lot. You know what? Marcy will not be on the show next week because uh, <laughs> she slows down the show. I'm kidding. Um, anyway, on Billy Joel, we have a Piano Man album wrap up. Don't forget Stupid Pet Tricks. Uh, it was on. It'll be on tonight at eleven. Last week, uh, you know, I had I was the rabbit and Damone. I had a lot to do last week. I'm not <laughs> sure what's happening this week, but it's always a good time on Stupid Pet Tricks with me and Sarah Silverman. Other than that, we'll see you next week right here on Tuesday at six o'clock Eastern Time on the Comedy Cellar Nightly Show. Good night, everybody. Thanks for watching.